Hey everyone, so I wanted to do a video today more of like a review and talk about this book When Chicken Heads Come to Roost, Come Home to Roost, whatever, by Joan Morgan. It's a hip hop, a hip hop feminist breaks it down. So if you watch my Saturday Reads video, you saw that I was, I read this last Saturday. I finished it Sunday, but, um, basically what happened is my friend crystal and i had brunch the one you saw last week when we had brunch um and she talked about how she loved reading this book back in 2009 and how she didn't love it this time her review is on goodreads um i might ask her if i can post a link to it under this video so you guys get her perspective so it prompted me to read it because number one I read chapters of it back in 2013 to write a paper and I love the chapters I read and number two I had been meaning to reread it in its entirety eventually however I just never got around to it like it was a low priority until she mentioned certain problems that she had with the book so what I want to say before I get into this like chat review um, Sorry, I got distracted. I'm getting text messages. But, um, that I think this is an important book. I think people should read this book. Um, that her book is important because it opened up the idea of hip hop feminism. And, um, a lot of people have gone off her kind of like original theory or original idea about being a black feminist and still loving hip hop or rap music. Um, and I think today, sorry, I'm outside and there's bugs. I think today that um, what she did, this book um, laid the groundwork for a lot of people to be able to talk about rap and feminism and being able to still identify as a feminist while loving the rap music that a lot of us black women grew up with. So, um... In saying that, there's still actually a lot of issues with this book. There's a lot of problematic things in this book. Um, and I know people on YouTube, when they hear the word problematic, they roll their eyes. But um, I think in an academic sense, there's definitely a lot of problems with this book. Granted, there's problems with every book that's written. But um, a lot of people talk about this book and praise this book for being what opened their eyes to being able to be a feminist as a black woman but still love certain things about how they grew up um love hip-hop which we all know is like misogynistic is it more misogynistic than any other type of music out there i would disagree um but for some reason everyone loves to point the finger at rap music and i say that as someone who has had issue with certain songs and lyrics and ways um, women are discussed in rap music. Um, so, kind of get this chat going a little bit more. The best chapter in here is Chicken Head Envy. And um, basically, if you don't know, the word Chicken Head was like popular when this book was written. This book was written in 1999, um, 2000. People did the Chicken Head dance, you know, like with Chingy. Um, that right dur song everybody was doing that dance but um chicken head is almost like calling a woman a hoe or groupie um or today's words fox like that hoe over there so in her chapter chicken head envy she's talking about the women who um like you know still having that chicken head envy of like women who have no problem with basically using sex to obtain money and power um whereas she herself is like this self-made woman went to college has a nice job um can pay for everything else but still um at the time she's writing this book was still jealous of the women who use you know their sexuality to get ahead um and i think that's part of why so many women so many black women love this book among what other things because it does cover a lot of conflicted feelings you have especially when you're first entering uh, 
the world of feminism. She wrote this book basically to counteract the academic side of feminism, that feminism shouldn't just be locked up in the ivory towers, um, that black women have um, had to find their own space within feminism, and that black women of her generation have had to redefine feminism. So one problem she talked about was being in college where feminism was largely a white woman's thing. Um, she kind of stereotyped it a little bit, you know, like she said, like a lot of the feminists she knew were like butch, uh, you know, uh, insinuating that they were um, lesbians, which of course being a lesbian is nothing problem, is definitely not a problem. Um, I think the fact that she insinuated that is actually a bit of a problem um, in that it didn't talk about race issues, um, which, you know, I went to a largely white college and that was an issue for us even back like in 2013, 2012, I think when the feminism club started that I was a part of. And um, the other issue of there being black feminists like Bell Hooks and Audre Lorde and Pearl Cleage and that not necessarily being her experience, the fact of like having a bit more rights as a woman, a bit more rights as black person, you know, and those things combined. Um, so she had to redefine feminism for herself. Um, and I think this book, I've come to the conclusion that this book is actually a good eye idea to show how um, hard it is to kind of grapple with re-examining re your thinking and trying to put together how feminism actually works into the life you're already living. Um, a lot of things contradict in this book and she talks largely about black men and how her feminism includes black men which I think by default um, when black people succeed and when the rights and we can see this like with the Civil Rights Act and certain other things that have happened in this country when the door is open for black people it is largely open for everybody else now the thing is you can't say that the other way around so for example like the suffrages movement um, white women you know were you know advocating for their rights even in the second wave of feminism white women advocating for their rights but that didn't while they got to vote and do other things as white women that doesn't mean things got better for black women or other women of color um, but when I say the Civil Rights Act, for example, once the Civil Rights Act was um, placed, and, you, and um, this is largely talked about in the book I read last year, which is called um, We Too Sing America. So that's about like Muslim and South Asian Americans. Um, the author of that book talks about how the Civil Rights Act actually allowed a lot of people to freely immigrate into this country. Um, of course, we're still having problems with that due to our current president but nonetheless that has opened the door for other people of color to come and exercise we can talk about affirmative action so on and so forth so by me saying that let me get back to black women the fact of like on the social totem pole that black women are under black men and maybe a lot of other groups in this country if black women are open more doors that opens more doors for black men of course however she spends a large time talking about, you know, black men and certain things that um, women should be responsible for, but the fact of racism affects them so much that, like, they should be given, in my case, we should give them more understanding, where she starts to argue that her feminism includes that women are responsible for their own choices but she does not discuss that in relation to black men for example she talks about um men and like reproductive rights for men um how they should be able to choose 
um, if they want a parent or not because we are allowed to choose whether we have children or not um, as far as abortion rights um, our access to adoption and raising children on our own um, there are a lot of issues with that and she speaks um, she has she speaks on that a lot um, I think a, in a lot I think it's a lot because it is a book that is supposed to be about black women and their issues and herself as a black woman um, so I see this book more as like a snapshot of somebody coming into feminism someone trying to work out their feminism because I and I relate to that like when I read certain chapters in this book I related to it I definitely related to chicken head envy like um, not and not to be derogatory I'm just referring to what she kind of called it um, to be quite honest with you guys there was a time where I considered like how can I get a sugar daddy without completely giving up the sugar? Like, um, and I was talking to certain girlfriends and looking certain things up. You know, these loans aren't going to pay themselves. I was in a spot where I wasn't making as much money that I want to. I'm still not. But um, this idea that, you know, your sexuality can be used as financial gain in this country Um you know it's like oh you do every you do all this hard work and you're still not seeing the benefits of it whereas you think that other women aren't working as hard as you but they're getting quicker benefits and um that can be discussed like we can argue all day about how beauty is like um either equally as hard trying to you know play to a man's ego or if it's not whatever whatever um that's a whole different discussion but I feel what she's saying. Um, also, this, um, the confliction of, well, you know, being someone who still identifies as, like, heterosexual, still wanting relationships, like, sexual and romantic relationships with men, knowing that um, they don't always treat you like you should. Um, they don't respect you as a woman, um... And how to deal with that in your new feminist identity um, so yeah in that respect I get where she's coming from I don't necessarily agree with everything she says but I think I agreed more when I was learning more walking into my own feminism journey I think I consider myself a feminist I always had feminist ideas, but I started openly calling myself a feminist back when I was like a freshman in college. Um, so I guess almost like four or five years now, I consider myself a feminist, I, if you're counting. Um, so yeah, while I see why this book is important, I think a lot of people have not discussed how there are issues with this book. Um, somebody on Goodreads mentioned how they didn't understand how we would have a book talking about feminism and never discuss the patriarchy and they're absolutely right she doesn't mention the patriarchy at all I also think that that was kind of her rebellion also too towards academia and I agree with her that feminism shouldn't just be stuck in academia it's a very I think a lot of topics don't have to be stuck in academia it's just that it's like who has access to what and who's willing to put it out in the public who has access to like and money to be able to put certain things out in the public versus things being stuck in the ivory tower and who actually gets the time to like sit ponder and think and write on these issues to make it even accessible to others um, and so I really respect Joan Morgan in that realm and I understand what she did was so important and the funny thing is when she was trying to act against academia she's now um, in the process of getting her PhD to um, also talk about like sexual politics of black women which is funny um, but I see how she ended up in that route because this book kind of ends up it's almost like she's working through this idea of like black women sexual politics racism sexism patriarchy and of course chicken head envy 
talks a lot about sex and how women, particularly black women, um, grapple with their sexuality and, you know, if they're using it to get ahead or not. Um, and even in that, she, even in what I think is the best chapter in this book, she still contradicts herself. So if you've read it, let me know what you think. Um, if you're going to read it, they just put out a 18 year special like edition with a forward by Brittany Cooper who teaches at Rutgers. Um, I really like her stuff too. Um, new cover. This one's pretty old, but it's a quick read. Um, let me know what you think. Um, we can talk about, I guess, black feminism a little bit. Also keep in mind that black feminism and intersectionality and feminism for women of color has come a long way since 1999, which is what I'm also tr keeping in mind while reading this book. Um, and it's funny that I just saw that they're putting out a new, like a new copy or a new cover with this book, but it doesn't say that anything has been revised and Crystal kind of suggested that they need to update this um, text and probably not because it was never meant to be completely academic in the first place. And I, it's being used a lot when it comes to discussing black feminism. There's certain uh, black teacher, well, not just black women teachers, but women or people teaching black feminism who use this book a lot in academia. Um, so yeah, there, let's just, we can just talk. Um, in the comments let me know what you think I know this video is a little long but I'm curious to see your thoughts and especially if you've read this book all right I will talk to you guys later bye